My name is Paul Bashir. I am the co-founder and director of Anonymous for the Voiceless. As you know, we have rules like wearing all black at the cubes. We wear the masks and only one kind of mask in the cube. We form a square cube structure. There's the outreach team and the cube team. So we have these kinds of structures. Another thing that we have as a standardized structure is the outreach. And that's what I'm gonna be talking to you about today. I noticed that there was a lot of things that I learned in my previous work experience in doing sales. All the sales training that I had received, there were things in that that I could carry over into outreach that were applicable here. I'm talking about certain aspects of sales that are applicable here because at the end of the day, what we're doing is trying to convince somebody of something they're not already convinced on. And that's what sales is really. Again, this is the only two things I'm telling you from the sales world, the feel, felt, found method and the three-step approach. The reason why I'm telling you about this three-step approach is because there's a traditional sales approach for every sale that occurs. So I'm gonna take you through that traditional process of how it works. The first step is to get somebody emotionally convicted in what you're talking about. The best way to do that connect them to the sense of injustice and hold them accountable to that injustice. That's the way you get them emotionally convicted in what's going on. The second step is to make it about that individual because people love to say, well, take it up with the government or these industries should be doing better. We should be protesting these industries. They try to palm it off to someone else and instead of taking responsibility, this is a typical human thing and that's why it's your job to make sure that they understand that they are in the hot seat. They're the ones who are being held to account right now. The third step is to tie in the benefits. So we start the conversation by, would you like to know why we're here? They need to say something affirmative for the conversation to go ahead. They either say yes or they try to guess. And that's an affirmative answer, so you continue. Yes, what we're doing here is we're showing the standard practice footage of what happens in the meat, dairy, and egg industries and other industries that abuse animals. Would you like to hear what we're doing here? Um, sure. Yeah, so what we're doing is we're showing the behind the scenes of industries that abuse animals, mm -hmm. like meat, dairy, eggs, leather. The next question you have to ask them is, how do you feel about animal abuse? Usually they say, well, it's obviously wrong, 100% against it. That's what they usually say, people say. Okay, so you think this is wrong. Would you say this is evil? This is me doubling down to make sure I've owned them on this point. Would you say this is evil? Would you say that this is evil? Yes. Treating animals like our slaves? Yes. Yeah? So usually they say that, then the next step would be, okay, what do you think you can do about it as an individual? So we've gone from the first step of the process within the three-step process of emotional conviction, really quickly moving to the second step, which is accountability. What do you think you can do about it? So what do you think you can do about it as individuals? Stop We can lying. become vegan. Yes, people say you're shaming people. We're not necessarily shaming people. We are making people feel guilty though because how else are we gonna make people go vegan if they don't feel guilty? Isn't that why you went vegan? That's the goal, is for them to feel guilty. You have to be aware of the fact that they're going to distract away from what needs to be discussed because their guilt is gonna be flaring when you're talking about something that's obviously wrong. I'm only gonna mention this one objection when people say I only eat meat once in a while. Have you heard that? Yes. They only say this to vegans and this only happens when they have a vegan in their environment. Again, this is just to prove to you how obvious this is. How obviously guilty people feel. It doesn't even take long for people to say that to a vegan. I don't eat meat that much anyway. I'm trying to eat less and less meat to not uh, participate to, to those killings. Okay. Why are you saying that? <laughs> You wouldn't say that to your non-vegan friends. <laughs> we use dogs as examples a lot in this movement. We try to say, would you do this to your dog? How would you feel if your dog was eaten? What about if a dog was getting beaten up right in front of us right now? Would you act on it? That blows up in our face a lot of the time. Replace all those cows with dogs just for a moment in your mind. Huh? If you said that stuff to me, it wouldn't really work because I was never really a dog lover growing up. But just one tool I'm gonna to give you right now is feel, felt, found. 
When someone says, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but meat tastes too good, so I don't think I could give up meat. So I would say, I understand how you feel. Well, I understand how you feel. I felt similarly when I was in your position when I first started looking into this, because I felt similarly when I first started looking into this information. But what I found is you could never justify slicing an animal's throat, stabbing them to death for a sandwich that I don't even need to eat no matter how much I like the taste. But what I found is that your palate pleasure that you derive from a food item cannot justify the torment and the suffering that we actually cause to those beings. Yeah, that's for sure. And you bring it back, so you take it away from this trivial nonsense to the reality of what we're talking about. But again, it's just a tool that comes from the sales world that is applicable here. We promote a sales approach, a value-based sales approach. When I first started out, I noticed a lot of similarities between what people say in the sales world and the training that you get in sales to some of the things we do on outreach to convince people to take animal rights seriously. So I tried to gel the two together, but I think I've created some confusion in doing that because it's created this idea that schmoozing people into veganism and tricking them with these, uh, you know, like again, like a special approach and saying certain things is gonna trick people into being vegan. And I'm also trying to bring over things that are applicable from the sales world into this. So to see what tools can carry over. One of them is a method called feel, felt, found. Okay, I'll also talk about the traditional sales approach. Guilt is effective. It's the only thing that gets people to go vegan. People say you shouldn't be shaming people. Don't guilt trip them. How else are we gonna get them to go vegan? How else are you going to get people to take animal abuse seriously if they don't feel guilty for what they're doing? And how are you going to get them to feel guilty if you don't bring up things that make people feel guilty? Like, you are an animal abuser and become environmentalist vegans or I'm vegan for health, whatever the fuck that means. I don't know why we think people care about their health. How many people here eat a 100% whole foods diet? Raise your hand. Not a single person. How many people eat lots of vegan junk food? Raise your hand. Yes. Half the room. <laughs> okay, why do we expect non-vegans are gonna give a shit about their health then? Right? This is not a health message. People feel just the same after they go vegan. They don't feel that much better health-wise. We just created this myth or this idea because we want people to take animal rights seriously. Let's be honest. That's the only reason why we started talking about this shit. Please do not use the word try and do not let people use the word try. Would you try to be a non-racist? Would you try not to be a child abuser? Or would you just fucking stop once you realize that it's wrong? Again, don't let them off the hook. Let them know that there is a moral imperative here. When someone says, I'm going to try what I say in order to get them to rid themselves of this try nonsense is to compare it to any other injustice like I just compared it to child abuse and racism etc would you say that you would try or would you just stop I want to try to, to, to do better I will try, I will try. there's no trying when it comes to justice you can't try to be non-racist you're either non-racist or you're a racist and I say that comparison because you understand injustice in that context but justice is justice What's evil is evil. You can't have it both ways. What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. So don't try. You have to do it. Again, you deal with the objection, bring it back to accountability. That's all you're doing. Deal with the objection, anchor it back to accountability. Once you have the concede after dealing with all of those back and forth, back and forth, once you have them concede, then you bring in the benefits. Do you know what the number one benefit is to be vegan? Usually their ears perk up when you say benefit and they look at you and like, mm, what is it? I want to know. And that's when you say, well, obviously the benefit for them is they're no longer tortured and abused for you. You're no longer the reason that this happens to them. But the benefit for you is that you no longer have to be an animal abuser. And you no longer have to be a hypocrite because you say that you're against animal abuse. Do you know the number one benefit of being vegan? 
Like the number one benefit. Any guesses? Like health. Health. The number one benefit would first, of course, be for the animals. They would no longer be abused because of you. But as individuals, the number one benefit would be if you say you're against animal abuse and you look at these screens and you're disgusted by it, then you no longer have to be a hypocrite. It's really important that we don't just say have a nice day after telling them the benefit. It's really important that you ask them what they're going to do. That's how you should end the interaction. So what do you think you'll do? And when people say, oh, I'll try to do better, then you tie in the fact that they shouldn't try, they need to do. And the best way to end it is, so what do you think you'll do? It's really important that you close off strongly because then it's like the whole interaction was for nothing if you don't close it off properly. Without that close, it really like seals the whole conversation and they really understand what the imperative is thereafter. After seeing this footage, after having this conversation, what do you think you'll do moving forward regarding this suffering? I mean, something had to be done, but I don't know. Just keep in mind that until the day comes that you're vegan, animals are gonna be victimized and abused because of you. So just think about what side of history you wanna stand on when it comes to stamping out this particular injustice. Now, the response usually to this is, what do you think you can do about it? Because again, you've got them, this is very quick, you've got them on the emotional aspect of connecting to what's happening here. Not fully, but you've got them enough You've got them enough on that point because you've started that interaction that way. What do you think you can do about it as an individual? It's very, very important that you close the interaction by asking, so what do you think you're going to do about this? Are you going to stop abusing animals from today and become vegan or not? What do you think about what I've said? What do you think you'll do about this? Yeah, we're going vegan. Okay. okay. We're going vegan now. You have to close it off with that question because you let them know what the imperative is from that, from that point on. That you're not just going to say, have a nice day, thanks for listening, without asking that accountability question, right? Then once they answer, you can say, have a nice day. The sales process itself. So traditionally speaking, sales has three parts to it, three steps. And it's a process that if you take anybody through, no matter what you sell them on, uh, as long as you meet the demands of each of these stages, then you'll successfully convince them. Okay, so whether you're trying to sell somebody an SUV or you're trying to sell somebody veganism, it's the same process. So there's three parts of the process. The first part, I'll, I'll say stages, the first stage is to get somebody emotionally convicted. The second stage is to make sure that they understand that this is about them making a difference as an individual. So the third stage. The third stage is benefits. So I would say that is actually the number one reason right there. Um, I would say the number one benefit rather is to clear your conscience, but number two would be your health, the benefit of having better quality health. Hmm? People feel just the same after they go vegan. They don't feel that much better health-wise. We just created this myth or this idea because we want people to take animal rights seriously. Let's be honest. That's the only reason why we started talking about this shit. Your hand went up first. I'm kind of going to do it that way, if that's cool. Yes. Uh, in my experience doing outreach, I feel with many questions of people just appealing to like personal anecdotes about they used to be vegan and they got really sick. Like, what can I say to them? <laughs> like, I don't know their personal experience. I don't know yeah. what they so how do I steer them like back to like maybe the ethical argument which I know we must like to focus on but like people say all the time oh I went vegan and I got sick like, if it came down to my personal health I wouldn't I wouldn't go back to eating animal products even if it came down to that if I had to suffer I would if you see a child watching unattended by a parent so we want to make sure that we have longevity here with these campaigns and we want to stay on the right side of the law here as well. So let's just um, raise, your, raise your hand if you see a child watching unattended by a parent. And then we will go over to the child and we'll find out if there is a parent and get their permission. If there is no parent, then we take the child away from the screens. But we continue to educate them in a child-friendly manner. So we have a child-friendly conversation about veganism with them. Hmm?
How old are you? I'm 12. Wow, you know a lot about this stuff for a 12 year old. Yeah. So do you know what the number one benefit is for being vegan? Can you take a guess? Uh, like you're saving animals lives. Yeah, what do you think it is? That as well? Yeah. Yeah. Let me put it to you this way also. The number one benefit for the animals is that they're no longer tormented, abused, and harmed in any way because of you. Yeah. You're no longer the reason that animals suffer immensely, are tormented and murdered. Yeah. The benefit for you as individuals also is that when you say you're against animal abuse, you'll no longer be hypocrites. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? So what do you think you'll do about this then? Try and eat less meat, yeah. Yeah, maybe even stop eventually. Stop. Okay. Now, just to wrap this up and I'll let you guys go. Is what you're seeing on the screens, is animal abuse and injustice to each of you? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Would you take the position that you just took with any other injustice? Okay. So now what do you think you'll do? Stop eating meat. Yeah.